What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Nate here from Out of the Basement, bringing you a brand new figure review. Today, we are looking at the re-release of the Ultimate Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th, Part 3, 3D. Apologies for the glare on the box right now. My lights are there. I can't really do much about that, but we'll take a better look at it. So let's take a look at the package here. This is like the standard shell NECA box. This has a lenticular cover, like the Ash uh, versus Evil Dead one. Same thing with the original. You can't really tell. There's some movement there. The original release of this also had the lenticular cover. Pop this bad boy open, and we get a good look at Jason here. And the pose right there. So that's awesome. It's got a ton of accessories. We'll go over that in just a second. We're going to continue to look at the box here. Looks pretty good. Nice side panel there of Jason. Some pics of the figure right there which look awesome. There's his bio right there. If you want to read that, go ahead and pause it. On the other side, same deal. On the top, not a whole lot going on, just the logo and on the bottom, the people responsible for the figure, barcode, all that good stuff. So let's get this guy out of the package. We'll take a look at the accessories and then take a look at the figure. So here is everything that Jason comes with. We've got the alternate head right there, the harpoon gun, fire poker, knife, monkey wrench, pitchfork, axe and machete so he comes with a ton of accessories a lot of iconic accessories especially from part three so i'm happy to see all of those i don't have the original release of the ultimate figure so i can't really do a comparison but i will compare him to the re-release of part six and part four so that'll be a little bit later in the video let's just get cracking on these accessories here take a close look at this head which looks awesome this is the battle damaged head where you can fit the axe in the mask and here is his head right here. Looks absolutely gruesome. Really awesome blood paint apps right there. You've got like a more so black paint on the wound there, which I think is a nice little touch. Ugly, ugly sculpt in the best way possible. This is absolutely a great head sculpt. Look at that wonderful paint job right there. The blendings of the brown and the darker sort of black tone on the actual head sculpt looks really good. The head sculpt itself is also amazing. We've seen this on the part four figure as well. So that looks great. Really like the battle damaged unmasked face. The mask itself also looks really good. Got tons of nice scratches on there. Little bits of silver paint. Really nice detail for something so tiny. And of course, the ax just fits right in there. Really nice and snug. So that's cool. Definitely a nice posing option. Let's take a look at the ax. I suppose not a whole lot going on with it. You do have some nice detail right there, uh, little bits of silver, like it has been chopped wood, which is a great detail. There's also the wood staining down the handle. You can kind of see it on camera. It's a little hard, but there are definitely little bits of black paint right there, which look really good. So yeah, really like this nice little detail here. Looks really good. Looks like a real ax. And we've got a clean machete here, which is nice because if you have the part four figure, you've got a bloody machete. So it's nice to have the options to have both. This looks really good. Nice clean silver paint. Not a whole lot going on there. Nice details. The pitchfork also looks really good. Again, same level of quality. It's a little bent there, but that's nothing, uh, you know, a little hair dryer or dip in the old boiling water can't fix. The handle on this is straight brown there's no uh wood staining detail like it is on the axe but that's okay the monkey wrench here also looks great nice little bits of silver mixed in with the red making it look used old just like a you know a monkey wrench you'd have in your garage just lying around so it's really nice detail on here and all of these accessories are really making me want some counselors from friday the 13th the game so uh let's get that going neko let's get that going this knife right here uh, looks, I think that's supposed to be blood, but it honestly just looks like, you know, chocolate or something. It's real dark brown. Maybe it's supposed to be like dried blood or something, but didn't really translate well on the actual knife here. So it kind of just looks like maybe Jason was, uh, you know, cutting some chocolate cake with this one before he decided to murder a victim. The fire poker, also classic, iconic, looks good. It's just silver. Not a whole lot going on there detail-wise. The harpoon gun looks great, fantastic. You can see those little tubes on the side here painted really well. The silver looks great. The point of the harpoon looks really good. 
Really happy with this one. Looks awesome. Can't wait to get my dock and then set him up on a diorama. So let's take a look at Jason himself. And here is part three Jason out of the packaging, looking like a total boss. Super happy with this figure, although I do have a few complaints about it that are just like minor annoyance. If you pay attention to details and such like that, there's just some minor things that are wrong with this figure. So let's jump into it, get him, remove him of this, of the pitchfork. And let's take a closer look at Jason. This is the same Jason body mold that has been used forever and ever, which is fine because it's damn near perfect. So not really going to dock it for that. The mask, I don't know about you guys, but honestly, like it kind of looks off. And this, I got a really big crack in the plastic on this mask. I don't know if you can really see that there. Yeah, you can kind of see it, but look at that. That I mean, I'm sure that's just a defect, but man, that's really annoying. Although I am going to display this particular Jason battle damaged with the mask off. Like the scene at the end of the movie where he's looking out the window at Chris. Really awesome moment. Taking an overall look, you can see his pants are lighter. They've got some nice blood on there, which looks really good. And also some like sort of grass dirt stains around his crotch there. Same thing pretty much along the pants there, but it's more defined. Uh, yeah, you can see it there. Nice dirty pant look, really good detail on there. Back of the figure, uh, same, pretty much the same detail, more dirt down below. So let's pop the mask off, take a look at the unbattle damaged head sculpt here, which looks really great. Obviously very accurate to the movie. No one's really gonna argue that. Um, so here's my first complaint is if you can see right here, Look at how the skin tone just does not match on this figure. It's really, honestly, it's kind of bothering me a lot that this head is such a dark brown and then his neck is just like regular flesh toned color. Really doesn't match. I don't think it's like that in the movie. And honestly, I looked at a couple of reviews of the previous releases and it didn't seem that bad as this figure. And also another minor gripe here is that uh, you can only have the bloody neck. So obviously that doesn't really make sense. If you're posing Jason, not battle damaged, and he just randomly has blood on his neck, I know that you really can't, you know, put a whole neck in there unless they change the whole tooling of the figure, but eh, that's kind of annoying and really only makes you able to have one truly accurate pose, and that's the battle damaged look, which conveniently for me is how I'm going to pose him, but I could understand other people being frustrated if this is the only Jason figure they have and they're a diehard fan. You know, Friday the 13th fans, we look at this stuff. Besides that, those two minor gripes, I'd say this figure is just as good as the other ones. Um, I would have liked maybe some additional hands here because some of his weapons, I did have to scrunch into his hands pretty hard, which was mildly annoying. And it's pretty small because it's supposed to fit like the knife and the machete. You know, like part six, Jason came with uh, different hands and so did part four. So I don't know why we didn't get any different hands with this guy, but let's take a closer look at the articulation here. Pretty much standard fare for all Jason figures. They all pretty much have the exact same articulation. Head can look up just a little bit and can look down pretty far. The shoulders, um, mine's a little stiff. Can go out pretty far, looks pretty good. Ugh, got, got that nice rotation there. Single jointed elbows don't get a lot of mileage out of these. My figure, the joints are just absolutely so tight, so I'm not really gonna try and force a whole lot here. Like, you can hear it creaking pretty bad. So, yeah, I'm not gonna really try and force a whole lot with this guy. Of course, you've got the wrist on a nice little swivel there, so you've got plenty of range of motion there. Same thing with the other hand. Uh, single jointed knees that do what they should. 90 degrees, looking good. Jason can kick out, of course, so you can continue having karate Jason there. Of course, you get the little gappage with the soft goods. Down here, the feet, you get a little bit of range of motion, not a whole lot. I'm not sure if it's the pants or just the articulation. It's probably a combination of both, but yeah, pretty limited movement, but obviously you're not gonna be posing Jason around in too many dynamic poses because why would you? Also, upon reviewing some other reviews of the previous release, the hand is different. This is more in line with the hand in the part four figure the hand was like a little bit more of a closed grip it seems on the other releases of this figure 
well, the other Ultimate release, I think the other release had this hand and then they switched it and then they switched it back. At least that's what it seemed like to me. Let's get Jason, let's compare him right here. We'll compare him to the part four Jason, since that's only one movie later. And then we're gonna compare him to the part six Jason. So let's take a look. All right, and as you can see, part three right here, part four right here, you can see they are very similar, but still kind of different. Uh, obviously the part four is darker, more zombified because he died. The pants are brown now, which is, you know, you'd have to assume either Jason changed his pants or they're just so dirty from him going around in the dirt, the mud, the muck, that they went from this nice blue color to this nice brown color. Yeah, you can see the shirt's exactly the same. Maybe a little bit different, just ever so slightly. His shoulders are a little bit more hunched up than this one, but uh, I think the mask, honestly, looks a little bit better on, on the part four release. This mask just kind of looks a little weird, looks a little deformed. It fits his face well, and I think that that was the intention, so I'm not really gonna knock it for that. And then just for the sake of a quick comparison here, here's part six. The new re-release of part six, looking really good with his shiny mask, which apparently is different from the initial release, which had a more matte mask. But uh, yeah, so you can just get a look side by side, determine which one you'd rather get. And of course, his head just pops off real easy as I, as I grunt while I say that. And then pop the battle damaged head on. And this is how I will have him displayed. Mask off, ugly as crap looking really awesome so overall guys if this is the jason figure that you can acquire and that is the only one definitely pick it up but if you have the option i would probably recommend part for the part four figure over this one because as you can see at least the paint is consistent on the neck it looks more similar it's a little bit off still but not as bad as this one and it's pretty much the same design but i think that in terms of accessories part four had a little bit more so that makes him a little bit better in terms of value. But obviously if you're a diehard part three fan, you know, definitely pick this figure up because while this is just a minor gripe on the neck there, I think that it still looks pretty good. And when it's battle damaged and you've got the blood lining up on his face, I think that just looks incredible. Can't wait to put this guy on the shelf with the rest of my Jasons. So that's my review guys. What do you think? Did you pick this figure up? What do you think of it? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Of course, if you enjoyed my review, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. We are always talking about action figures, movies, comic books. We just started our video game channel back up again. We're playing some PUBG over there. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link to the gaming channel in the description. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Nate from Out of the Basement, and I will see you next time.